So today I'm going to have a guest, Mohamed Al Midfai. He came as a banker and he resigned from his job to launch his business, coffee shop. He is running a successful business. And you will see me in his episode, I'm going to change my clothes to be more casual with him and friendly. Just listen to this episode. So it's uh, Tuesday morning. Today we have the first guest, Mohamed Al Midfai. He's coming. He is coming from different background. He came as a banker. He started his life, his uh, career journey as a banker, and he said, "No, I'm I'm not going to be a banker for my whole life. I'm going to try new things." He failed. He struggled. He was rejected by many people. But he said, I'm going to do it no matter what. He opened many businesses. He failed. And now his coffee company everywhere in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi. Just I want Mohamed Al Midfai share your story. How did you start? How, how did you struggle in order to launch maybe more than five companies now? First of all, thank you for having welcome, me. Welcome, welcome, brother. I really appreciate being here, Said. It's been so long since yeah. I've seen you. Yeah. I think it's been 10 years. You know, 10 so years. Yeah. Uh, just, just one thing about me and Mohamed Al-Mutfai, we worked together before in the bank. Yes. Now, today, I'm doing something new, and he's doing something new also, but for a long time. Yes. So share his story. I, 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 I remember when we were sitting in the coffee, you said, I'm going to open a coffee. Since that day, I didn't see you, and you resigned, and now I'm bringing <laughs> back. So share your story. So uh, my story started actually not with coffee. Mm-hmm. My story started with, uh, of course, see every every success has a failure behind it. Yeah, you know this is something True. that is uh, important to understand. Uh, my first successful venture was called Assalamu Fire Safety Training. Okay. So, um, and uh, that what launched, I would say, my path on in entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, before Assalamu, while I was working in the bank, mm-hmm. uh, the moment I came back from the U.S. in 2012, okay. I always wanted to have a startup and, and be my own business owner and my own boss, etc. So um, I made a lot of mistakes on the way mm-hmm. uh, where uh, I learned from those okay. mistakes. I, I, I wouldn't call them mistakes because mm-hmm. without them, I would not be here. Yeah. A hundred percent. Without without these without these uh, uh, situations that I passed through and mm-hmm. experiences that I went through, I would not be here because mm-hmm. you build on your experiences. You build on what you learn and, so. and, and, and what you go through. Uh, so my... If I, if you want me to take you back so to start you, with you my open now Al Salam, Al Salam, Al Salam is still running. Yes, okay, yeah, seven years so far now. Seven years. Yes. What about the the businesses like you failed? Yeah. So so how before, did you fail? So how did you learn from them? So my the first venture when I came back, I uh, it was in, in in it was a tech venture. It was an mm-hmm. e-commerce. Okay. So before your souq and your yeah, yeah. And, your, and and any of your like you know big ventures uh, mm-hmm. or your big e-commerce that's here, um, me and a group of friends in 2012 wanted yeah. to open an e-commerce. Okay. Uh, I was uh, the person in charge. Uh, I was a partner in the business, and mm-hmm. I was in charge of the design and okay. creative and also business development. Mm-hmm. Um, none of us had the experience. We didn't okay. know what we wanted. What we we knew what we wanted to do in a general okay. idea. We wanted to have an e-commerce website. We wanted the place that we can, you know, you can uh, have a um, a bartering system where okay. people can trade things. People can buy things from the mall and get delivered to them. Exactly what what what, what people use today in e-commerce. Mm-hmm. We wanted to have drivers in every mall. Okay. So we had the general idea. We had the big picture. Mm-hmm. But we didn't really have the skills to execute. And that was the problem where um, I really believe that um, there are many elements that mm-hmm. define success. And the first one is timing. At that mm-hmm. time, um, it was 
maybe the right timing for it mm-hmm. uh, b- because people were tech savvy and they're on their phones. Technology mm-hmm. kind of existed for this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second main factor is the team, and which we did not have. Okay. So w- when you started, did you have a budget? Did you take a loan, or did you start with something really huge? No. So so we 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 started we started with a nice amount. We mm. we 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 were f- we were four friends, mm. and we brought together around five hundred thousand dirhams, which is okay. a large amount of money. Yeah. But that was the only thing we had. <laughs> we had we had money and we had dreams, uh, oh. but we didn't have skills or experience. It's true. Uh, so, f- literally for one year, it was spent brainstorming in a majlis of a friend, mm-hmm. sitting down and talking about what this idea could be and where that where the company can go and what we need to do and the functions. Okay. None of us had any technical background, mm-hmm. uh, any coding background. Uh, we dependent on we were dependent on outsourcing mm-hmm. the work, which was for me it's, it's a big no no if you mm-hmm. don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so it ended up by ha- being frustrated. Uh, okay. You know, after one year of going nowhere and just talking mm-hmm. for myself, I was guys, this is done. I'm, I'm done with this. Okay. I can't do this anymore. We're not going anywhere. I'm out. And uh, and I left them. Uh, at that time, you took some some money with you, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we, we we recovered our capital. Okay. We recovered our capital. Okay. So I d- there was no financial loss. Okay. But to me, time is money. At the yeah, end of the day. yeah, yeah. So there was there was time loss, and and the time. But I gained the experience of learning of choosing the right partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, knowing that having the right skills, having the right uh, knowledge of whatever you want to go into. Or having at least a, a background of what needs to be done is very important. Okay. So that's lesson number one, I would say. And after after you learn from from this journey, the partnership with the others, what are the next business? So the next business was interesting. So I took so we were four guys, right? Yeah. So I took one of the guys who who kind of was a mm-hmm. had the tech background. He was okay. like in IT and for technia, he was like in the higher college technology. It's like listen. Let's 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 do our own thing. You're the only guy with brains here, <laughs> you know. I, I can sell anything. Let's yeah. do this. And uh, we went to New York University. So at that mm. time, I remember in, when we were in the bank in National Bank of Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Um, you know, for whomever doesn't know what National Bank of Abu Dhabi is, now it's uh, Fab. It's yeah, the first Abu Dhabi bank. Yeah. This is before the merger. Um, I. Uh, I went with my friend. We went to New York University. We okay. we used to take a lot of interns from mm-hmm. NY uh, New York University Abu Dhabi, mm-hmm. and uh, we met with the hack team around fifty students wow. in the auditorium. I spoke to the recruitment department there, and mm-hmm. I told them, "Listen, I would like to meet with the hack team. Mm-hmm. They were some of the most brightest and smartest students mm-hmm. uh, that 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 are in Abu Dhabi." And I pitched to them the idea mm-hmm. of the of what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, we literally were having like interviews with each one of them, and 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 at the end we land, ended with like their pictures on the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, it felt like American Idol, you know, like looking at who would we make into the team, and we chose okay. twelve students. Okay. They were all top in, w- in whatever they do. Uh, they they um, they're very smart, and and that was mistake number two. Okay. For six months, yeah. uh, we were not able to. I, I took I took all the. Um, so what I done, I took all twelve students. Mm-hmm. We went to a retreat. I booked for a hotel for two days, and okay. we came up with our MVP, mm-hmm. our most valuable product, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and then uh, had a outline of what the project needs to be, and let's execute. So that the twelve students, they they were part of of your business that you yes. are going to do. Yes. So so I said okay. So lesson number one was okay. We didn't have the skills, but we had the ambition. Okay. Then then okay. How can I resolve that? I went and I said okay. Let me get the smartest kids in town, mm. and I got the smartest kids in town. Okay. And that was mistake number two because mm-hmm. the smartest kids in town were very focused on their academics ah, and did not really sure. have time to work yeah. and and execute. So things took very long as well. Yeah. So another year passed. You remind me of something, Muhammad. Like I heard it from someone is saying, the statistic is saying, forty percent of most successful people in business and entrepreneur journey didn't have a degree. Mm. 
they quit the, their school or they didn't complete their their master they, they didn't complete their university and they are successful so it doesn't matter degree to measure your success or uh, your your business and entrepreneur journey yes that's what i heard so yeah i mean i mean these students were all studying uh, either computer science or yeah. something related but they haven't graduated yet yeah but they were bright enough to execute the work and some of them actually right now are are working in really good firms uh, like in Morgan Stanley and, and uh, some of them are in Amazon the main main yeah. Amazon so they went off and did really great things and I'm happy for them yeah. uh, so that 12 person yeah you made a mis- mistake by choosing the 12 people yes by by choosing but I would say by choosing students yeah. to 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 be the main uh, building blocks of the company. Okay. Um, you can rely on really bright students as part-time or certain tasks yeah. or clear deliverables, but having them uh, being dependent on them yeah. for a whole project that that was my mis- so my, my second mistake. What happened after? So after that, we dismantled. Mm-hmm. Uh, we dismantled the team, and I said, you know what? Let me focus on my career. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me focus on my career. Let me let me let me, let me stick to being a banker. This is, <laughs> it seems like this is working, you know. Okay. Um, at that time, and uh, I, uh, I think by that time we were already in. Uh, I was in business development. Then we okay. went to innovation. We had the innovation department, mm. and. Um, I've learned a lot from that as well. Okay. So, so my, 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 my time at the bank taught me a yeah. lot. Uh, and then from there, I went to the risk department. Okay. Uh, and that's where I met you. I met you. Yeah. yeah so I remember. We, we were in the risk where we are not taking risks, but we are do, doing dif- some, some, something different now. We are taking risks. We are doing things we will not be able. And we were before encouraging people to donate to Chris. Oh, I have ne- I need more plan. Oh, I need more uh, capital. I will not start this. But actually, we are taking risk. And you took many risks. Yeah. So after what you learned from from the bank. Yeah. So 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 what I've learned from the bank. After that, um, I started I started thinking more practically. Right. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, what is the business idea that has a lower risk? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, has uh, you know, uh, and I became more risk aversive. That's mm-hmm. what they say. I became more risk yeah. aversive, and so I started looking into uh, different sectors within Dubai, mm-hmm. and uh, I found the safety or the fire safety training mm-hmm. um, part is, is is there. There are not many companies mm-hmm. that actually do that, and it is something that is uh, obliged by by many companies by mm-hmm. law to mm-hmm. perform. So there is a federal law 505 that obliges all companies in Dubai mm-hmm. in order for them to renew their li- trade license they yeah. need to train 10 to 30% of their employees mm-hmm. in fire safety. So I said why not you know do that and <laughs> and, and I have no idea anything about it. like I I don't come from a civil defense background yeah. or a safety background. You took it as an c- opportunity you said took oh, it as an opportunity. We we needed we need we need to solve problems of the community of things we don't have many things in, in yeah. this country or so let's do it yeah so, so there are only like three companies at that time uh-huh, uh, when okay. we started and now there's like only like seven but after the pandemic we're back to three mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um so i went to the civil defense and i mm. asked for this i i remember i went to uh i i went to the uh, the the uh, the the general in, in civil mm. defense and i asked him i told him i want to open a fire safety training institute okay he looked at me and he was like, are you serious? Because apparently I'm the only Emirati that's running a company like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. There's no Emiratis that are running a company like that. Mm-hmm. So I uh, we started the venture and alhamdulillah, uh, it was very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, I would say it, it, it gave me the confidence yeah. and also it gave me the tools of uh, and knowledge and experience that I need to start other things. Okay, so after you said yes, it's working, it's working. I'm mm-hmm. going to open new things. Yes, I think the coffee. Yes, the, the co- coffee idea yes. came in your mind. I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna so do the, it. The coffee idea was there before uh-huh. a long time ago. So the coffee idea was there in 2013. Okay. So we opened the Marathi Coffee in. Uh, so Marathi Coffee was established in 2017. 
So now you started about the coffee shop after you failed uh, with the other business. You said, I'm going to open a coffee shop yeah, from so where the idea came. So, 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 so what happened in uh, 2013, uh, we, I was in Bali, yeah. right? And I visited the coffee farm and I fell mm-hmm. in love with the idea of... Uh, Why did you visit Bali? So I visited Bali on my, on my honeymoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good memory. Yeah. Yeah. I brought you back to Bali Definitely. now. Yeah, but see, it was a coincidence, you know, mm. and, and yeah. I was telling you this of, uh, of the mic that yeah. if, if I did not get sick, uh, yeah. I was planning to go to, to Japan okay. and everything was booked and we we're supposed to go to Japan. Okay. And then I got sick and the, the, the trip got canceled. Okay. So last minute I was like, where would we go? And said, okay, let's go to Bali. So, so th- thankfully, you know, we went and I visited this coffee farm and I fell in love with, you know, the whole process and coffee in general. And I came back to Dubai in 2013 and I said, okay, I want to open a coffee shop. So okay. I visited the Dubai Mall and mm-hmm. Galerian Mall and Wassel Road. Mm. And they all rejected me. Oh, they rejected you? Yeah, they all rejected me. But you found a way. You said, no, they rejected. I'm going to stay. I'm going back to a bank. I'm going to do my, my stuff. I usually, yeah. I was doing it, but you so, said. So, so yeah. what happened is, is, is I, 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 did, I, had, I, I did the full plan. Mm. I had, all, uh, I had uh, the whole operation hashed out, the drawings, and what okay. we wanted to do. And... It was something really nice. It was mm. specialty coffee. At mm. that time, m- people did not really know what specialty coffee is. Mm. And uh, so the malls were like, we have enough coffee shops. Mm-hmm. We don't need your business. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so let's let's put this on the on the shelf for a moment. Okay. In 2017, mm-hmm. uh, I I saw a resurgence, or okay. I saw, uh, not a resurgence, uh, a surgence actually. Yeah. And, a rise in demand and um, knowledge being spread around and the first specialty coffee shops being okay. popping up around town. I said, okay, this is the right time to enter right now. And But based on my past experience and, mm. and, and my knowledge, I said, okay, I don't want to open a coffee shop. And and uh, I want to be in the background. Uh, if, if this is a new industry, this is like, you know, blowing up right now in the UAE, mm-hmm. I w- and, and this is like McDonald's, mm. I want to be the chicken farm. <laughs> you know, I want to be in the back end. Okay. Uh, I want to be in the supply chain, in the actual supply chain. So we opened our roastery. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were the first Emirati uh, specialty coffee roastery okay. to open. And obviously our name, Emirati. Mm. But, uh, but, but Muhammad, yeah, you opened. But was it scary? Like you said, I'm going there, I'm going to success. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was not... Honestly... You only live once, right? So, yeah. so it wasn't scary in mm. a sense where if I did not do it, then why? I think that uh, you should not, you should not, you should not overthink the risks. So. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, excuse my language if I would say this, but the most successful people in life that I met mm. uh, in business, yeah. right, uh, can be the most socially uh, um, I would say what, for the lack of a better word yeah. uh, retarded <laughs> you know what I'm saying so they're, they're socially awkward they're not really smart they're, yeah. they don't have the street smarts right True. but they're very successful mm-hmm. uh, they don't have the charisma maybe right they yeah. don't have the charisma they don't have they're, they're not a people's person or if they are they they might be stuck up or yeah. you know you, you'd look at them and say, like how is this guy successful in his business mm. And then you look back and you see how he started. This guy did not overthink the risk. He just yeah. did it. Yeah, so you know, he just did it. When you when you overthink, you, you make s- you create more problems. Exactly, and and you, you slow yourself down. Yeah, and 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 uh, you start with the problem, and you feed the problem, so it becomes more and more and more problem. So not, not only that, it's, it's it's because when 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 you overthink, if you don't do it, you will not learn. It's true. Actions. Yeah, you will not Actions, learn. Actions, yes. You, you won't learn. You, you, you won't learn from your mistakes. You won't learn from your experience. And you won't be able to grow. You know, for, for, for your guy who's, who's healthy, who works yeah. out, for your muscles to grow, you need to break them down. It's true. So if you don't take action, you, you'll never break down those muscles and you're never going to grow. If, if, even action, even uh, uncomfortable actions. Yeah. Like how do you get out of your comfort zone? How you grow? Without taking action, 
So, some people will say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to sm- swim from the book. But if he goes to the sea, he will go down. Yeah. You have to try, you have to take action by, and you learn by, by doing it. Definitely. So after, after you, you, the, the idea of coffee shop and uh, uh, you were rejected from Dubai Mall on many places and you opened uh, here in, 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 in Algoz. Algoz. So we opened a roastery yeah. in Algoz um, and uh, it was two, me and my two uh, school friends. Okay. And everybody asked me, how did you guys come together? I don't remember. I remember me telling them that I'm going to open a roastery. <laughs> and they were like, we want to be part of this. And it's like, okay, uh, look, uh, definitely, you're my brothers and, mm-hmm. and uh, I need the capital, obviously. Yeah. We'll all put the same amount, okay. uh, but there's only one captain and one ship. Mm-hmm. So I'll lead this. You trust me with this? Let me do okay. it. So th- they supported you or they said, oh, no, 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 go away? Or no, they supported. They support. Until today. That yes. environment is really yes. important. So, so yeah. five... Uh, partners uh, if uh, a lot of people are like i was raised in a household mm, that yeah. was against partnerships okay you know m- my, my dad always told me sharaka araka yeah right so uh, partnership is uh, is a struggle or as a conflict yeah uh, but then but uh, Imarati coffee proved otherwise uh, uh-huh. i have partners that are amazing they're mm-hmm. supportive they're there whenever i need them in business, uh, in business, you need someone to be with you as a partner. Uh, not, not, not necessarily, uh, but um, not necessarily. Collaboration. Um, the collab. Uh, when, no, when I'm talking about an actual business partner, mm. uh, there has to be a, a good synergy between okay. whomever you need to partner with. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need to contribute. Either, uh, either they contribute something uh, mm. in an area that that is. Uh, um, well defined, yeah. or they're 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 mature enough and professional enough to know that mm-hmm. they're silent. Okay, you know, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of times um, from what I hear, and I have mm-hmm. not, uh, and I, and I went through this experience yeah. later down the road in Saudi Arabia. We're gonna speak <laughs> okay, about that. Okay. Um, partners say they're silent and do your thing, but mm-hmm. then when the business becomes successful, they start intervening and they want to be part of it, and ah. that takes things down. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so, um, now, so the, the, so the failures or, or the experiences, I, I, I don't want to call them failures. Yeah. You know, failures, the, fa- the word failure is a negative, uh, negative so. word. We're still here, we're still standing. It's a learning you know, process. Still, it's a learning process. The experiences that I went through in the past, mm-hmm. I actually went through other experiences now yeah. in the last two, three years. Yeah. That so also taught me even more. So now you you have your partners yeah. in the coffee. After yeah. what did you decide? What did you do? So so we started the Marathi Coffee in 2017 mm-hmm. and uh, obviously Salama is still yeah. going. Uh, and Imarati Coffee, alhamdulillah, became one of the most successful brands yeah, I see. in the UAE. Believe it or not, I did not tell you what was the name before Imarati Coffee. We were going to call it Leshla. Leshla? Yes, imagine that. Why well, not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Exactly. You why know? not one coffee before you go to the war? Why, <laughs> why not? Why not anything? The answer, why not? You can answer why not to anything. You know? yeah. so, 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 so the guys are like, Muhammad, no, impossible. Yeah, why not? And, 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 and when they say no, and I answer back, why not? You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then we said, you know what? Okay, we're Emirati. Mm. We share the ambition of the country. Yeah. So, so the brand... Mm. Um, has nothing Emirati, uh, there's not a lot of Emirati cultural elements to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's we chose the name Emirati because we share the ambition that the UAE has, the Emirates yeah. has. Yeah. Uh, and we wanted that to be shown in the company. Yeah. Uh, the ambition of becoming an international and global company, which we are. We're recognized internationally, mm-hmm. uh, all around the world, and, and we're very well known around the coffee community right now. So, so Mohammed, when you, when you launched your coffee, was it easy, for example? I know maybe you visited many places to check the coffee type, you check many things. It's just not like you partner with the three people, three friends, school, said, I'm going to open tomorrow, I'll go to take license and we'll choose the place and just we launch after one month. No, so at that time, so at that time, I remember I was having conversation with yeah. a, a uh, uh, with uh, Joe the roaster. He's an American guy. Mm. He's he's a he's a famous roaster, a coffee roaster in the U.S. Okay, and I was telling him. Uh, see, the, I, I was asking him, 
I wanted to hire someone to mm. come and run the company yeah. from the US, like a, a roaster and so on, because they yeah. had the knowledge and the experience. Yeah. The, the background, the experience is not, is not here yet. Okay. And he was like, Mohammed, why do you want to hire someone? Why not do mm. it yourself? Wow. You know, why not go and learn and do it yourself? And I was like, yeah, why can't I do that? Mm. So I went to London School of Coffee. Wow. So yeah, so, so I went to London. Mm. Uh, and uh, I uh, I went to a place called London School of okay. Coffee, and I took all the coffee courses that I need to take to learn how to run the business, mm -hmm. uh, how to run a roastery, wow. uh, you know the different elements of the supply chain, mm -hmm. uh, the product itself. Because you gotta understand, we're not a coffee shop. Yeah, you know, we supply coffee shops. Stro Stro you know what I'm Stro saying? Stro so I need to understand, you know, how the trading happens, mm. you know, how the raw material, where it comes from, what it is, and all of that. It's a good point here. Like you went to the, to specific things, yeah. You know, so some people say oh, I'm going to study master in finance or study master in business. Uh, yeah. So general. I did. I did my MBA. Yeah. yeah. But but this one, like when you say business, I go to study. You are going in general, right? Yes. But when you say I'm going to the coffee to learn about the supply chain, I know I know about the type of the coffee. You are going to specific things. I think you. You, instead of going for years or wasting time, you just went to specific things and learn what you want and you apply it in your coffee. Definitely, yes. That's, yeah. that's, that's what happened. And I think uh, uh, this is something really important. Mm -hmm. Again, learning uh, or building on my past learnings is, yeah. is actually, you know, have some idea or have some knowledge of what I wanted to do. And, yeah. and, and, and not just a general idea, but yeah. actual specific, you know, practical information that allows me to to become a, a success or a good contributor within mm -hmm. that, that business community or that sector. Okay, so you open now, you launch your yeah. business. Mm -hmm. And, and it was like for the first year or two years, it was difficult to, to, to recover your, your investment. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we opened in the right timing. Okay. And um, it was, it, for the first year in 2018, so mm. we've, our first day of operation was January 1st, 2018. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when we opened the door of the roastery and we started roasting. Okay. Uh, business was slow, obviously, in 2018. Uh -huh. Okay. We were yeah. still new. People are still getting to know us. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a lot of co cafes, specialty okay. cafes around. The trend of me, I want to open a coffee shop, mm -hmm. is not yet there. Okay. Um, 2018 uh, passed. Uh, we uh, built the team. Okay. We started learning. And uh, uh, 2019, uh, we. Uh, we, we started uh, getting well known because okay. there wasn't a lot of competition. So when we started, mm. there were only around six or seven uh, roasteries in the UAE. Okay. Today, there yeah. are over 150. Wow. Roasteries in the UAE. So, so before we were like uh, a tree amongst tree. Mm -hmm. Right now we're a tree amongst grass. Yeah, it's true. You it's know? true. And it's, it's very easy for us to, you know, show why we're different, why we're, I would say, better, mm -hmm. uh, way more established than any of the new startups that are, are here today. And customers get to see the difference between, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, what's good and, and what is mediocre and normal, yeah. let's say. So in 2019, you started to, to, to be known in the market? Yes, so 2019, we started to get known more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2000, the pandemic was actually, one of the best things that happened to us. <laughs> really? Yes. Everyone said, I, I, I remember I hosted one guy, he said, my business started to gain more revenue during the pandemic. Pandemic. So we grew oh. online. Yeah. We grew online uh, around, uh, like I would say in a triple, a triple digits wow. on a monthly basis. Like how? By social media? Social media. So so what yeah. the pandemic did yeah. is we were already getting known and mm. we were already in cafes. Yeah. We gained a new customer base, which is the home baristas, okay. right? So the pandemic did is that put everybody at home mm -hmm. and they're, all they're looking at is on their phones. Mm -hmm. uh, and this helped us. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we've done in, during the pandemic uh, is that we... I always look towards Henry Ford's story for, for yeah. uh, inspiration. 
So who, who's uh, Henry Ford? So Henry Ford is the founder of Ford Motors. Ah, okay. Right? So what did Henry Ford do? Henry Ford created the modern assembly line. Mm. You know, uh, and how did he do that? By looking at a butcher shop. Okay. So Henry Ford one day he was looking at a butcher shop and he was seeing at the the cow how it's cut and butchered and mm. uh, throughout the process until yeah. it gets to the window or the the glass where the display for okay. people to buy a piece of meat. Mm-hmm. So he took that idea and he created the assembly line and he was able to produce more cars. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for me, innovation is is uh, should is not necessarily technology, but sometimes. Ergonomics, organizing your desk in a better way mm-hmm. for you to b- become more productive. That's innovative, right? Yeah. Looking at other industries and what they're doing and how can you apply it in your industry. Mm-hmm. So what we've done is we, at that time, there was a very famous uh, website called okay. Boutiquat. Okay. Have you heard about it? No, no, no. So Boutiquat, uh, they had a scandal for money laundry in okay. Kuwait. It's a huge, huge, huge platform mm-hmm. with every known celebrity within the GCC on it as mm. uh, so what Boutique Art does is that they have white label products for celebrities mm-hmm. influencers and at the same time like pro- uh, pro- off the shelf products like okay. products that are not white labeled on, on their name and each one each celebrity or influencer has their own boutique okay and they sell their the products that they use and love creams perfumes whatever mm. you can think mm. on their their boutique to their followers and mm. to their you know uh, uh, fans okay how it helped your business so we created the same idea where mm. we during the pandemic we worked with over 50 influencers okay. uh, and we created for them coffee shops on mm-hmm. our website Okay. So they promote uh, white uh, uh, co-branded or collaboration mm-hmm. products with these influencers and celebrities uh-huh. to their customers. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And, uh, and 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 this allowed us to see who our real customers are, mm. uh, because we worked with uh, celebrities and influencers that target everybody, like from sports to fashion to TV uh, pre- uh, presenters across the board mm-hmm. uh, chefs and and they would market their their coffee bags their mm-hmm. machine bundles whatever you know drip bags that's co-branded whatever yeah. that we have with them to their customers okay so you reminded something you know uh, during during I, I watched before when I was young uh, a cartoon about the mouse the, there were two mouses you know one was waiting for the cheese to put in his mouth and the other one, was going to find the ma- the cheese. So it's same thing during pandemic. Some people, some businesses shut down because they waited. They said, oh, the economy is not helping us. They lost hope. They lost hope. But yeah. you know, you, you said coffee shop, yes, lockdown, the people not come. But you were, you- Online. F- yeah, you found something. Yeah, I, you know, and, 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 and a lot of people around me, a mm. lot of people, family members, uh, friends who have businesses, yeah. All of them were depressed. All of them saying the economy is down. Yeah. We're, yeah. Uh, things are going down, and 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 blaming uh, others. Uh, blaming yeah. others. There is no way that we're going to recover. It's going to take long. Yeah. Whatever you see on TV, that's all propaganda. <laughs> Negative. Negativity. Yeah. Negativity. Yeah. Yeah. And and we did not feed them to that because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, as a founder, I have mm-hmm. responsibilities towards my employees. It's true. I need to make sure that you know this keeps the show keeps going, mm-hmm. right? So uh, so that was a very successful move and it, it grew our presence mm. uh, immensely okay. and, and increased. Uh, so, so in 2019, our wholesale production um, was around uh, five metric tons a month. Okay. Um, the pandemic hit mm-hmm. and there's zero wholesale because okay. all the coffee shops yeah, are closed. Yeah. We were able to replace that uh, in, uh, that that production mm. with retail through mm. online sales. Mm-hmm. So so now you have uh, you have a coffee shop in in Al No, so we have a roastery in Al A roastery, and yeah, and a cafe. And we we and we actually had so so. There's a lot of things. Yeah. While I'm saying this, yeah. there's a lot of things happening simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So we had we had a coffee shop in Jumeirah. In Jumeirah now. Yeah, no, before. Before Jumeirah. Uh, we opened in 2018. So we okay. opened the roastery and the coffee shop at the same time. Same time, okay. And the reason why we opened the coffee shop because we wanted to gain exposure as a mm. brand. If we were staying as a roastery, we yeah. would not gain the exposure. True. And we were lucky where our contract 
ended in January 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mall, Dar mall. Yeah. Uh, they were telling us to renew, and mm. we're like, no, uh, we got enough. Two mm. years, we had the exposure we wanted, mm. and um, we're gonna go back to what we originally do, which is Roast. only roasting. Yeah. And we closed the shop, okay. and then the pandemic hit. So we were very lucky in doing okay. that. You know, yeah. that, was, that was that was luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't calculated or anything. It was luck. You know that yeah. that we we removed a liability. It yeah. would have been a liability right. because the coffee shop would be yeah. a liability during the the uh, by 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 choosing to focus on mm. what we do best. So you don't have a coffee shop now. We do have actually a flagship shop in Yasmol. Yasmol. We opened in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, place. it's Friday. So yes. you have the grocery in Dubai and the coffee shop in, in, in Yasmol. Yasmol. Yeah. So at that time, um, so yes, so the coffee shop in Dubai and the roastery in Yasmol. Mm. Um, and uh, I told you I'm coming from Ras Khaima because we just opened an Italian restaurant in Ras Khaima. Okay. So we're going to get that. To yeah, that yeah, yeah. So, so that's really interesting. You are moving from, we say, mashallah, we are, you are moving from one business to other business. You failed, you, you learned, you, you found the, your way, and now it's coming. So if I ask you a question, some, some do, 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 anyone uh, wants to open a business he should start with the big thing or just start with the small once he learn and experience and uh, fail many times and get the problems then he can open many things um, or he can start just a big no I, I honestly I would say what Zig Ziglar said mm. um, you don't have to be great to start, but you mm. have to start to be great. Yeah, start. Start. That's it. Uh, it doesn't matter, big or small. Yeah. Um, I I started with uh, with help of uh, family mm-hmm. and and friends. So okay. Um, so the uh, capital to uh, to yes. launch your business, the coffee or roastery, it was from the help from family. Yes. So I went to fa- so when I quit my job. Yeah. In in 2017, yeah. I think or 16. No, no, no. It was. 16. Mm. I quit my job in 16. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember honestly when I quit my job. 16 or 15. Something like that, yeah. Around that time. Um, I At that time, I was working in Amar Square here in Dubai. Mm-hmm. And my first office was in a business center. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and actually, an, an office way smaller than this one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I was walking every day going uh, from... I was in Sovetel, which is mm-hmm. right next to the uh, 48 Bridge Gate, next mm-hmm. to the... Uh, MR Square. Mm. So every f- 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I'll go out for a smoke break, but I'm actually mm. going to my office. Yeah, yeah. So I stayed there for three months, and I was like, you know what? My heart is not into my career anymore. Mm. My heart is not into work, and I uh, I cannot do this. I cannot like just you know receive an, uh, a salary and work yeah. for someone that I'm for not security really, or for yeah, safety. Uh, yeah. Uh, but but in the same time, it was more of a ethical issue. Mm. You know, I, I, my heart is in the office and not in, in, yeah. in my old office anymore. Yeah. So I said, you know what? It's time to quit. It's time. It's time yeah, it's for time, a it's new fi- journey. It's time for my junior journey. And uh, so I, so I submitted my resignation, and yeah. uh, and and the rest is history. Yeah. And uh, you, Muhammad, uh, when, uh, yeah, when your friends and your father helped you in your business, did you pay back them? Yes. And if if you if you can share the figures like how much you started with the coffee and how much the last uh, revenue you had in your coffee. So uh, we started off. We we were three guys, right? Yeah. So we started off with uh, around three hundred k each. Okay. Three fifty each. Mm-hmm. Uh, so around like one mil. Yeah. Uh, to start up the business, to build uh, the mm-hmm. place, and uh, to buy the equipment yeah. and all of these things. And uh, we today, Emirati Coffee uh, generates around uh, 12 million a year. Mashallah, yeah. yes. So uh, I just give it like ju- ju- it's, see, it's but, one but thing. Yeah. It's just a start. It is you, actually it see, see, so, so, yeah. so 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 the 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 it should have been rev- generating more, but because mm. I am all over the place. So yeah. during this time, I was talking about the pandemic. I was mm. in Saudi. Mm, yeah. Establishing a coffee shop, an actual coffee shop, a new brand there. I remember and I called yeah. you, uh, Muhammad. I want to do a podcast. I want you to be as a guest. 
He said, I'm in Saudi Arabia, I don't know what's my schedule, I have other questions. So now I, I, I want to go more. So from one business to other business, it started with the, with the failure and now you have a coffee. What other businesses you have? So uh, we, um, so in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Saudi Arabia, we have two things. We have a coffee shop in Khobar okay. called Nowhere. It's called nowhere. It's called nowhere. It's not why not. No, 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 no. <laughs> nowhere, nowhere with a K. Okay. And the reason why we chose that, I chose that name is uh, it was named after uh, the, the the planet nowhere. Yeah, if you yeah. watch the Marvel movies, where uh, the I don't watch movies. I I have been asked with many guests here. Did you watch a movie? I said no. I don't go to a movie. I have to go maybe. No, no. I have to. Go <laughs> I have to go. So so Saudi has a big. Uh, comic uh, yeah. uh, base, you know, a lot of people love Marvel. And yeah, I'm, me personally, I'm not into mm. comics, but um, I said, okay, uh, it's a nice name, Nowhere mm-hmm. with a K. Okay, uh, it doesn't have any meaning, but it's also in the same time, anyone who knows the comics would recognize the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, uh, we have Nowhere and Khobar, and okay. we also have a comp- um, a chocolate company okay. called uh, Truffleers. Uh, today we have uh, five branches, mm-hmm. in, uh, two in Riyadh uh, and three in the west eastern region, ah, Hassa, yeah. Bahran, and Dammam, and uh, one coming up in uh, Jeddah and another one, uh, two coming up in Jeddah and one coming up in Bahrain, hopefully by the end of the year. You told me about the figures Muhammad al Mudfa is really encouraging for anyone who wants to start anything. And uh, I want to ask you now, yes, like coffee, how many people, I can see many people, every time I go anywhere, they drink coffee, they drink coffee. And your coffee shop, how many person can come and drink a coffee? A lot, I, I didn't count, but uh, our coffee that we source from yeah. origin and yeah. we roast and we supply, we, we, we uh, like around seven tons. Of coffee, so that's that's a lot of coffee. So uh, the people more come in your coffee in the, during morning time or afternoon or at night. In our culture in the UAE, yeah. all day long, all day long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, people don't consume coffee to wake up. People consume mm-hmm. coffee as a social activity. Mm-hmm. So, do you do the analysis like to check the country, uh, the the customer to come in your coffee, what time they come? It's really important. Or it is, and uh, I mean, it's already well known. So, so mm. you have obviously the people who come in the morning and yeah. get their morning coffee, and mm. then you have uh, people that uh, come at night. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, Coffee shops today are social gathering. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's for yeah. social gathering. People go with friends and where do you want to go? Let's go to a coffee shop and sit yeah. down. And they drink coffee. So so as a community, I think we're quite immune to caffeine now. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, uh, I, have, I have a sister already wants to open the coffee and uh, I'm sure when she she watches this, uh, this podcast, she's, I'm going tomorrow to do it. Because you are, you are a great example for many people. And now I want to ask you, who are you? Who are you, Muhammad al-Midfai? I'm Muhammad uh, al-Midfai. Who, who are you? Like, what do you value? What can you do for others? What, what, is, your, what is driving you? So uh, that, that's exactly what drives me. So what drives me is value, right? How, right. Can, I, uh, how can I bring value and impact? to my community yeah. and how can I become a valuable member of my community. Um, As a great leader for others. It's important. To, yeah, it's yeah. important. If, if, if what you do does not have value, mm. um, then there's no use. Sure. You know, there's no purpose. You know, there, there has to be a purpose for you to, to, yeah. to, 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 to get the drive every day it's to do true. what you do. It's true. And, and value not necessarily should be, you know, people will think, okay, what kind what kind of value can a coffee company bring, right? It's coffee, what kind of value? Uh, I bring value to my employees' lives. Yeah, so. You know, I bring value to their lives, uh, I enrich their lives, uh, and uh, uh, I bring value to 
to my to my community's lives yeah. in terms of providing them, you know, with the with the right atmosphere and experience for them to create value themselves. Mm. So some people they say, oh, they are lucky. They have offices. They have uh, coffees. They have many shops. They are really lucky. So why they are doing that? They start to blame you. To blame many people, but they don't know you are helping each other. You create. Uh, create careers for them you yeah. you help them f- financially it's not about just you open you get the money no you help the community yeah. you do many things you are a really great example for other muhammad Thank you. And, and and now this one the last question w- would be probably because interesting and uh, maybe we spend uh, a lot of time discussing about your coffee and other businesses and what's your desire what do you want more well Um, so I just uh, we just opened an Italian restaurant yeah. in Masal Khaimah and uh, you should visit huh? so it, yeah yeah you, you told me I called you I will be late 10 minutes because I'm, I'm coming from Masal Khaimah I know now the reason yeah so, <laughs> so. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the first casual fine dining yeah. Italian restaurant in Masal Khaimah mm-hmm. it's called Salve Okay. Um, and you should visit. Yeah. He, he did not reply to that that question. You, should, you have to come. I will be say happy. It. Thank you. I'll hold you to that. Thank you. Um, so we chose Ras Khema because uh, you know we wanted to stick out. I would say mm-hmm. because there is not that kind of offering is not there. So m- one of my desires, for example, there mm. is to win a Michelin star. Mm, wow! Yeah, so I, 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 I always, I was always into restaurants, and mm-hmm. I love to eat, and, yeah. and uh, I visited Michelin star restaurants all around the world, yeah. and so, so that's one desire for me there, mm. and, and I would say as in terms of a business goal, right? Okay. But uh, uh, to answer your question more broadly, what yeah. I really desire as a person, um, I desire sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, always being able to um, have impact and create value. Yeah, of that's 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 my desire. I I don't really desire. I I don't have a financial goal mm-hmm. uh, because more money, more problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah more yeah. money, more responsibilities. Uh, and I got to learn that the hard way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's 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 my desire to create value and impact and and a sustainable. You know, uh, uh, infrastructure. When you create impact, you see you see others how they are acting to you. Here you feel happy. Here you feel yes. fulfilled. Here yes. you feel I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more for the community. I'm doing more for the people here. Yeah. Mohammed Al Madfa, it was really really ha- good conversation, and I'm very happy that you came here today. You made it in spite of many other businesses you do. I uh, really appreciate it and thank you. Thank you, Zaid. Thank you, thank you for thank having you. me. I appreciate it. It's thank great you. seeing you. You know, it's been it's been so long and thank you for having me. Thank you and have a great day. Appreciate it. You too. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 <laughs>